Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're working on this Generac GP3250. Uh, this one was given to the channel by Stanley. He is a local subscriber who's given quite a few things to the channel over the last couple years. So thank you, Stanley, for that. Anyway, the story I'm told on this one was that it was left behind uh, from a tenant on a property that Stanley rents out. So he doesn't know anything about this machine's condition, but from looking at it, I'd say it's had a very tough life. Uh, the tank is actually about half full of some of the worst smelling fuel that you can imagine. So that needs to be dealt with. You know, unfortunately the fuel valve was left on, so I'm sure the carb is a total mess. And the engine, it kind of rotates, but it requires extreme force. So the engine's not stuck, but it does have potentially some issues. You know, as far as the rest of the machine goes, you know, it looks complete. Uh, the valve cover is rusted. Really, everything is rusted. And on the power head side, I do see signs that someone has been doing something because these bolts, they are not driven in and they're actually stuck where they are. So, you know, I'd say most likely these are cross-threaded into place. So, yeah, this machine has issues. You know, I'd say worst case, though, it will make a good parts machine. But potentially, we can get it to run and make power again. So that is going to be the goal today. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. So I'm going to start by getting the fuel out of the tank. And I was kind of hoping the valve would shut off, but no, that is not going to happen. So I'm going to have to be quick about it, although I kind of doubt that this fuel is even going to flow out of here. But let's just cut the line. And it looks like we might actually have a little bit of flow. And no, there's nothing actually coming out of the tank. So yeah, let's remove the bolts in each corner. We're going to have to remove this fuel valve altogether and just pour it out. I guess we can take a look inside first. I'm kind of afraid to. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that tank. Let me just put this right back on and pretend like I didn't see that. It is shocking how much rust is on this machine. I mean, this whole area would have been covered by the fuel tank, and yet this governor arm is completely rusted up. And I'm really surprised, actually, the throttle plate moves. And I was half expecting the spring just to turn to dust, but it still has some spring in it. So as bad as this looks, it actually should work fine. Uh, the adjustment for the spring tension, too, actually kind of moves and that screw right there I, I'm not sure if it's ever going to move again so you know that is something we'll have to deal with assuming we make it to that point anyway as far as the tank goes I mean the fuel that's in there is a hundred percent hazardous waste at this point so I'm going to get a little bit out just so you can see how bad it is and the rest of it's going in a collection container for hazardous waste collection That looks like water. I 
I wonder if this engine was underwater. So that is a lot of water to have in a fuel tank. And the amount of rust on this machine, I just can't imagine that from sitting outside. Yeah, to be honest, I was expecting this to look a lot worse. I just took the pre-filter out so I could get a look at the actual bottom of the tank and was really expecting the worst and was kind of surprised actually to be greeted by some clean metal. You know, I did not think there would be any clean metal down there at all. So yeah, I wouldn't call this a great tank to recondition, but it is theoretically possible. So. You know, I'm going to set this aside. You know, that is not my main concern right now. I want to find out if anything on this machine is viable. And if it is, then we'll figure out what to do about this. All right, let's check the oil. I put a pan under here just in case the block is full of water or fuel. And no. Looks like we're about halfway up the dipstick with just oil. So that is a good sign. Gonna get the starter recoil off next. That way I can rotate the engine forward and backward and get a better feel for what's going on. Actually, the engine rotates fine, so I think the issue was with the starter. And believe it or not, we have compression. That is shocking. So this should run, as scary as that sounds. So let's just pull the drain real quick on the carburetor, make sure the bowl is empty. I'm gonna throw the recoil back on. We'll plug in a light, give it a bit of starting fluid, and see if this thing will start. Yeah, that should make it a little bit easier. And I happen to notice too on the side, there is a sticker for an emission certification. And usually they have a date on them. So I was kind of curious how old this machine was. And it was kind of hard to believe it, but the date on that tag is 2012. So this machine really isn't that old. Lots of compression. Beautiful. Let's take a look here on the carb, see if there's anything in the bowl. Oh yeah. There is some stuff in the bowl, and if you look at the bolt that came out, there is rust and varnish on it. So this carb, I would say, is not gonna run the machine without either being cleaned or replaced. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna try to get the spark plug out. We'll put a little bit of fuel on the cylinder and try to start it that way. <laughs> that plug does not want to come out.
Wow. Do I need the impact? Oh, there we go. Jeez. I think that one wins the award for most stuck plug. And it's a torch. Everybody's favorite. These are known as a plug you probably don't want. So they tend to fail more often than a name brand like a Champion or an NGK. Surprisingly though, the plug looks like brand new. Wow. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put that one right back in. So let me get a little bit of fuel in the cylinder. We will try to start it and see what happens. All right, let's give this a try. I've got a light plugged in and turned on. We've got fuel in the cylinder, so let's pull it over and see what we get. All right, we get the ignition on, circuit breakers on, and the choke is on. Amazing. This, I gave almost a 0% chance of working. And not only does it run, at least for a second and sound good, but we're making power. So we have a viable machine here against all odds. So I say we pull the carburetor off, see if we can't get that cleaned up so we can run this a little bit longer. Yeah, judging by how clean that plug was, you know, I would say someone was trying to get this to run at some point, you know, even the carburetor, I mean, it doesn't look brand new, but the fact that the throttle plate moves so easily, given the condition of this machine, I would say that carb was also replaced probably at the same time. You know, unfortunately there was fuel left in it. So yeah, it may not be in very good shape. That was pretty loose. And so is that one. All right, place your bets. I think this one's going to be bad, but not terrible. Well, that's a good sign. It came out pretty easily, although, yeah, there is a bunch of rust on it. And, yeah, the bowl... Not in very good condition. And the rest of the carb looks pretty bad. The needle is not completely stuck, but I wouldn't say it moves very well. But from here up, it's actually pretty clean. So as bad as this is, it has a chance. Although I do have other bowls, so I may not even try to clean that. That pin is stuck. I'm willing to bet the main jet is stuck as well. Yeah, it is stuck. So I'm just going to soak this in the ultrasonic like this for an hour or so. And we'll come back. 
We'll try it again. I still have a little bit of the Harbor Freight degreaser left. I don't use it much anymore because the recipe has been changed, you know, and now can cause damage to aluminum and other similar metals. You know, in this case, it really needs a good degreaser. And this carb you can get brand new for about 20 bucks. So if it doesn't make it, it's not a big deal because in its current condition without an aggressive cleaner, carb's not going to be any good anyway. You see all those bubbles? That's what I'm talking about. They changed the recipe. That is a chemical reaction that's happening right now with the metal. So, yeah, unfortunately, can't use it anymore on carburetors. It's just too damaging. So let me drain this out. We'll try something else. Yeah, I did just order a couple degreases to try. You know, early on I tried a bunch of different ones and really didn't look too much further. Once I found that Harper Freight stuff, it worked so well. But yeah, that's uh, that stuff's not an option anymore. Yeah, it's cleaning up really well, actually. The float, the needle freed up. Let's take a look at the bowl. That's amazing. So that was mostly varnish, I would say, and not rust. So, yeah, I think this carb is perfectly viable. Uh, that said, though, I am going to let it soak, I'd say, at least for another 10 minutes. This carburetor cleaned up surprisingly well, especially the bowl. You know, I really thought that that was rust, and it turned out just to be varnish. So let's see if that main jet will come out now that it's been cleaned up. Yep. It was in there pretty tight, but it's coming out now. And yeah, it's a good thing we got it out. That emulsion tube looks pretty rough. And the main jet, surprisingly not clogged. Although I'm willing to bet it's restricted. So we'll definitely clean that. This is just a cap on the idle set screw. That should come right out. So that's just the idle set screw, and underneath is the pilot jet. That's pretty much it. So I'm just going to run through everything, make sure it's clean, that all the passages are clear. And then I'm going to put this back in the ultrasonic for another 5 or 10 minutes, and then we'll put it together and try it out. Emulsion tube was plugged right at the tip.
Yeah, that seat's pretty dirty. The needle also doesn't look great. There's a little bit of a ridge on it, so I question if this carb is going to be able to make a good seal between that needle and seat. So I'm going to clean the seat a few more times until the Q-tip comes out clean. And I'm spraying some carb spray on the tip. All right, let's get this back together. So starting with the emulsion tube and the main jet. All right, let's test this out real quick. Upside down, like this, that needle should be closed. So I'm gonna blow through the line. You should not hear anything. If you do, it's gonna leak. And we're good. That should not leak. So we can get the bowl on. Bowl nut's been cleaned with a wire wheel. And then finally the pilot jet. Make sure it goes all the way in, which this one isn't. Yeah, let me put just a little bit of oil on there. There is an O-ring and sometimes it gets hung up on that. go and lastly the idle set screw so this generator does not idle but you still need to put the screw in because it serves two purposes one is to set the minimum throttle position which we don't need to do in this case but the other is to hold down the pilot jet So just turn it in until a couple threads poke through like that. And that should do it. Let's try it out.
Okay, good. Needle and seat seem to be working. So let's try to start it and see how it goes. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. I did add the kilowatts. So if the engine does start, we can double check the output. Now, I'm kind of expecting the engine to run slow given the amount of rust on that spring. And the set screw, it's rusted in place, so we're not gonna be able to adjust it, uh, which is fine. You know, I just wanna see that the carb can run the engine with the choke off and not surge. So let's try to start it. Choke's on. Nice. Yeah, it's hard to believe it, but that carburetor, it's running the engine perfectly. So everything that needs to work is working. And I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't. You know, this is a complete mess. And now that we have a viable machine, that just means we have to figure out kind of how to proceed here. So, you know, at a minimum, we need a tank. That is not optional. We also need to free up this adjustment right here. And as far as what to do with the rest, yeah, I'm gonna to have to give that one some thought because I don't really have spare parts for this machine. And to make it perfect, it would cost more than this is worth, unfortunately. You know, even if this was in mint condition, right now it would be hard pressed to get $250 for the machine. And of course, this one is far from mint. You know, it's not worth a ton of money. So I think the main focus here is gonna be getting everything mechanically and electrically working the way that it should. And then we'll see what we have left in the budget. You know, I do have some stuff that I can improve on without spending a ton of money. So yeah, let me give this one some thought. Uh, but for now, let's get the oil changed while it's hot. The oil actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's well used, but there's no sparkles, no little bits of metal. So the engine would appear to be in good health. Perfect. I don't think this rubber thing is factory. Looks like something that would go on a garden hose. Could be wrong, but I'm gonna leave that out for now. Before I order any parts, I wanna get this cover off. I mean, someone's clearly been in here and yeah, maybe use the wrong bolts. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm hoping there's no funny business behind here. And yeah, that's not gonna cut it. Let's try a socket. Yeah, this bolt is way too long. So I guess that's maybe good news that maybe it is the right thread. It should be an M5, 0 0.8. And this one looks to be bent. And I was gonna say it's coming out, but it might, I was gonna say it might be broken, but no, it is coming out.
Wow. That is on there. It's pretty dirty in here, but things look like they're connected the way that they should be. So, yeah, that is a good thing. All right, the order's been placed. I found a tank on eBay for about $42, and it should drop right in place without any modifications. So that is on its way. It'll be here in a few days. And I guess the only downside is that it's painted Honda red, which is gonna clash horribly with this machine. So we're gonna have to paint that black to get it to blend in a little bit better. You know, as far as this linkage goes here, you know, I've been spraying it down trying this screw and it's it's not moving it is just completely rusted in place so instead of fighting this you know i did also find a kit that should solve this issue you know it includes the adjustment right here a new governor arm a new governor rod and a spring so that was 22 dollars and should also be here in a few days so what i'm thinking is that you know while we wait for that stuff we need to deal with what we have, starting with the frame. So I'm gonna get the engine and really everything off the frame. We'll clean this up, get some fresh paint on it, and then we'll turn our attention to you know cleaning up the engine and the stator so that when the parts arrive, we should be ready to get this thing back together. All right, three of them are stripped. Only one came out. So let me try some vice grips. But there's really not a lot to grab onto. They're just so rotten. crazy thing is that these just screw into plastic so it really shouldn't be that hard to get out Mm-hmm. 
Just not enough meat there. Wow. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. Just gonna get this air box off. They are very easy to break. And once I take this engine off the frame, this is gonna be really close to the ground. And it wouldn't take much to just snap it right off. Yeah, that took much longer than it should have. You know, I spent too much time trying to save the bolt and in the end failed. So we got three of them out, one of them still in, so we'll deal with that in a bit. But we've got what we wanted now. The frame, it is free of the engine and the stator and the control panel. And yeah, we just have a few more things to pull and then we should be in a good position to get this cleaned up. And we are missing the feet for this machine, so we're gonna have to get those replaced because without them, this kind of hammers on the ground and the generator sits on level. Frame rail is a little bit bent out of shape. Not too bad though, I've seen quite a bit worse. Uh, but we do have another issue right here. That weld is broken. So we do need to tack that in place. And we also have a couple broken welds right here. Actually the welds didn't break, but it just ripped the frame right here and here. This is where the bracket would have been uh, for the handles. We'll also need to fix that up uh, but for now, let's just clean it. Actually, we'll sand it first, clean it, and then we'll fix these issues before we get any paint on the machine. It's crazy how much dirt fell off of this machine 
But I guess that would explain why the first time I ran it, it smelled like potting soil. don't have a lot of options as far as getting out what's left of that screw. I did drill a few holes kind of going around the screw to try to relieve some of the grip that the plastic has. And I still can't really get a bite on it with the pliers to get that thing to spin. So there is plenty of plastic going back and the screw at best only goes about halfway. So what I'm thinking is that, you know, if I can remove some of the plastic around the screw, then I'll have something to grip onto again and hopefully get that screw extracted without completely destroying what's left of the plastic. I think it's coming out. Wow, that took hours, but we saved the control panel. You know, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say damaged, but certainly modified but it should still work just fine.
Yeah, the frame is cleaning up quite well. Uh, that said though, we are gonna have to do another round of sanding. So I'm gonna do that off camera. But what I do wanna do right now is kinda shore up some of the problem areas. And I guess the first one being this rail right here. The weld is broken, so we need to fix that up. And the second issue is the missing handle. You know, there should be a bracket right here and a handle like this would have been bolted to it. So I was thinking of just making a new bracket and attaching this handle, uh, but given that this is already weakened, may not be the best idea. So instead, you know, I think I'm gonna use this handle here. Now, this handle I actually had to buy. It's a $40 handle and this one was free. So ideally I would use that because this one, it's gonna put us over budget and it's also expecting square tubing. So if I just attach it like that and clamp down, chances are it's gonna move out of place. So, you know, I guess I could do the easy thing put a couple self tappers and that would keep it still most likely. But instead, you know, I think it might be better to put a piece of angle, you know, just weld it on. That'll give us two flat surfaces and keep the handle from spinning. Uh, but then I realized I can't do that either because this distance from top to bottom, it's an inch. And this tubing that it goes onto is already an inch. So if we add any material to the top or bottom, this is no longer going to fit. So instead, we're just going to use a piece of flat bar. We'll weld it right to the face and that'll give the bracket one flat side, which should be enough to keep it from rotating. So yeah, let's cut this to size and weld it in place. So we need to cut it right about there. I'm going to purposely cut it a little bit short to keep it from sticking out on the ends. So I'm thinking we'll temporarily clamp this in place. That'll hold this flat bar in the right spot. We'll just add a tack right there and then we can remove this and then put a nice bead running along each side. I'm just gonna slide the bracket down Technically, the bracket has to be off center so that the handle is more in the center. So I'm actually going to have to grind the paint off quite a bit further down. So yeah, let's take care of that first.
Yeah, it seems like the weld is a little bit hot, so I did turn it down a bit. You know, unfortunately, I don't have a fine control on this welder, so yeah, I think I'm gonna have to turn it back up, but let's just try it real quick. Well, that's not good. I just blew a pretty big hole in that tube. Yeah, not my best work. It was going well until I got to the bottom. Just a huge section of this tube just collapsed. So we had a big hole right there that I made with the welder. And of course we already had one right there. So I had to fill in the hole and yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but I think a brush and grinder should improve on that a bit. Plus this is facing down and it's gonna be clamped with the handle. So you are never gonna see that. Let's try this out. Fits perfect. And it keeps it from spinning. So good. Let's try fixing the rail. And that's a lot thinner than this. So yeah, I'm gonna have to be careful on that one. I turn the heat settings way down. It's probably gonna be too far down, but let's give it a try. It's kind of funny. This was the weld I was most worried about blowing out and it actually took quite well. So this rail, it is secured and we have the proper support for the handle. So I'm going to pause it here and just take a second, sand and clean the frame again, and then we'll get some paint on it.
It is 24 hours later and the paint, it's nice and dry. You know, it came out pretty well. Uh, not perfect, but it is a million times better than what it was. So I'm going to get this down. You know, we need to move on. There are a bunch of things that we need to paint black, starting with the new tank that came in. So we'll get that out of the box, throw it on the frame, make sure it's going to work. And if it does, we will paint it up as well as a bunch of other things here. We have a brand new starter recoil that was sent to me by Nick actually back in 2022. So we'll make that black and we'll freshen up these things as well. This foot has already been prepped, the broken rubber feet removed, and this heat shield here, it's actually not that rusty, but we do have some white overspray and it's bent out of shape. So we'll bend that back the way that it should be and freshen that up. And then that brings us to the exhaust. It's pretty crusty and I don't think any amount of sanding is going to really show any fresh metal here. So I think, you know, best case, I'm going to put a fresh coat of paint on top of the rust, which isn't ideal. But yeah, I have a feeling if I sand this until I see clean metal, we're just going to get a hole in the system. So the paint will at least kind of slow down and help protect uh, what's left. And ideally, I would uninstall the exhaust system. So I'm going to give that a try. You know, those bolts look a little crusty. So, you know, if it doesn't want to come off, I'm not going to force things. And of course, we'll paint up the end cover and the blower housing. So let's start just by test fitting the tank. And hopefully that fits this frame without issue. Interesting. The holes, they line up perfectly, but the tank won't drop all the way in. It's actually hitting the rail, like from here to here. So, yeah, that is not a good thing. You know, we can push it down in, but it's, it is making contact with the rail. So, yeah, I got to give that one some thought. I'm not sure if that's going to cause a problem. You know, potentially I could trim the rail a little bit. Maybe just attack it with the angle grinder right here to give a little bit more clearance. So, yeah, let me try that. I think we're going to make out okay on this one. The tank, it drops in properly now, and I put a bolt loosely in each corner just to make sure the alignment was good, and they all dropped in without issue. So I think the tank is going to be fine now that we made that adjustment. And I ended up grinding the back rail instead of the front because the front rail, the paint came out nearly perfect. And the back rail, not so much. It needed a second coat of paint anyway. So you know, I'll touch that up, but I'd say the tank, it's a go.
budging. Good enough.
All right, my daughter wanted to help clean this up. So she has the wire wheel. I'm going to hold this still and we will proceed a little slowly on this one. Go ahead. Good. Oh my. Okay. Okay. Looks uh, good. All right. You want me to do the rest? Sure. So this is not the hardest part about painting is cleaning the thing you want to paint. <laughs> you have to clean it or else when you paint it, if you just paint over like that, it's going to look horrible. But what? I'm impressed it came off. So now we can clean that mess. So then this is still covered with dust. <laughs> so what we have to do is take something this dries quickly, but it takes. Oh my god! <laughs> the heck? Yeah, this is just alcohol. It cleans it, kind of degreases it. It looks like it got even dirtier. And it dries real quick. So once it dries, we can paint it up. Of course, we got to keep doing it until the towel stops looking like that. I think. It already looks a lot better, even without paint.
I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. Everything has a nice finish, even the frame. So it's actually been a day. You know, these parts are all dry to the touch. Uh, not fully cured, but it can definitely be put back together. So I say we turn our attention now to fixing this governor issue and, of course, cleaning up some of this mess. So I'm just going to start by getting this carburetor off. We'll get the governor arm, the governor spring, and we'll get this rusty bracket off. Now, I did cheat. I loosened these bolts up before ordering anything. I wanted to make sure they weren't stuck like that one, and they did break free. So the bracket should come off, and with any luck, the replacement should fit. At least I thought they'd break free. Actually, I'm just noticing this stuck screw, I think it's gonna create interference trying to get this bracket off. And even if it doesn't create interference, it's gonna lock the wrench and I won't be able to get it out. So let's see. We can probably just loosen it and lift it at the same time so we don't end up binding. Actually, let's get the spring off. Here's a look at the kit. Now this came from eBay. Actually, the guy I bought it from, I've purchased a lot of clone parts from. He has a really good selection and was really surprised when I saw he had a complete kit, which appeared to be the right part. It wasn't advertised specifically for this machine. but it does look to be the exact part. Now this is the part I'm most worried about. I guess there's two reasons. First, you have to recalibrate the new arm versus the shaft, and that should be pretty straightforward. The thing that really concerns me is that this shaft can fall into the engine. So when I unbolt this, there is a pin under here that should be there. You know, if it's missing or rusted and just turns to dust, then I could theoretically lose the shaft into the engine, in which case we have a big problem. So yeah, I'm gonna proceed slowly on this one and hopefully don't have any accidents. And I do think I see the pin under there, but there is a lot of junk. 
as well. And that is really stuck on there. There we go. It's coming off now. And yeah, the pin, it is still there. Now, the thing that makes me uncomfortable is that the pin doesn't go through the shaft. There's actually just a part of the shaft with a groove cut into it where that pin is sitting. So when I put the new arm on, if I push down too hard, I'm just going to pop this pin out of that groove and then the shaft drops in. Okay, good. It's snugged up just a bit. Now we need to calibrate it. So I'm going to put the governor rod back on and attach it to the carburetor and we'll put the spring on as well. And then we can calibrate the arm to the shaft. So before we calibrate the system, I'm just going to show you how to check it to see if you even need to calibrate it. You want to look at the carb, figure out where idle is which is right there, that's against the idle set screw. And if you rotate it the other way, that is wide open throttle. So this governor rod moves to the right to go to idle and to the left to go to wide open throttle. Now, the travel should not extend beyond where this rod drops into the carburetor. So if I pull, it shouldn't move. And you can see we're moving past where it needs to be. So that right there tells you that things are not calibrated correctly. So to fix it, we need to attach it. You know, we'll slide the carb on, we'll loosely tighten it to hold it in place. And then we'll move over to the other side where the governor shaft is to actually make the adjustment. Now, before I do that, I'm actually gonna add the spring which you don't need to do, but it does help a little bit in that the spring will hold it in the wide open throttle position. So if there's any question as far as which direction that is, the spring is usually a dead giveaway. So I'm going to apply a bit of tension to the spring. You can see we're backed off quite a bit. And once we have a little bit of spring tension, you know, this is going to snap into the wide open throttle position. Which it's doing now. So, yeah, to the left, wide open throttle. So as the governor rod goes to the left, that shaft rotates clockwise. So I'm going to hold it in wide open throttle. Actually, I need to loosen that up a bit and rotate the shaft, in this case, clockwise, which is the same direction that would allow the governor arm and the rod to go to the left. All right, so we are loose. We'll turn this clockwise until it stops, which is right there. So it's a very fine adjustment. Now, ideally you would hold that in place, hold the arm in place and tighten it. Of course, with two arms, you can't do all that. So what we're gonna do is just snug it down and then we'll double check it, make sure the alignment's good. Okay. To double check it, it's just the same test. We'll get the governor rod off, slide the carb up against the engine, 
rotate it to wide open throttle. And the only direction I can actually move this is to the right. And if I move it to the left, it stops right there. And you can see that alignment is perfect. So that is just a good way to double check that things are good. All right, before we move on, you know, I did splurge a little bit. You know, I came across this valve cover on eBay. It is brand new, seems to be a perfect match. And it also comes with a new breather line, new hardware, and a new gasket. So let's get the old cover off. You know, we'll double check the valve clearance while we're in there and then throw on the new. These bolts are surprisingly loose, or at least not stuck. And the valve cover is actually loose as well. Usually the gasket holds it on pretty tight, so I would say someone was in here recently. Looks pretty clean inside. So I'm going to remove the spark plug. It'll just make it easier when pulling the engine over. And I'm also noticing too, this valve, this flat spot on this retainer should be facing down. Otherwise the rocker is going to hit the retainer and eventually cause the valve to fail. So let's carefully rotate this all right and that should be good the one on the right also looks a little off so we'll rotate that and now we shouldn't have a problem so yeah, let's get the plug out, check the clearance real quick. And someone has definitely been in here. For reference, the gasket should look like that. Instead, it's quite a bit smaller. You know, I think these pieces have been torn off. So someone's absolutely been in here. Anyway, let's rotate the engine until one of the valves is fully open, and then we'll check the other valve. So right now the exhaust is open, and we'll check the intake valve. Now, I can tell there is a bit of valve lash there. And of course we know that because the engine runs. If the engine had no compression, then a valve might be to blame. Now I haven't looked up the spec on this, but usually on the intake, it's four thousandths plus or minus a thousandth. And the four fits quite well, so let's check the five. The five does not fit. So the intake, I would say, is perfect. And now we'll check the exhaust. And the exhaust is usually a little bit larger, you know, five or six thousandths. So let's check a five first. Yep, five fits fine. A six also fits. And so does a seven. So I'm gonna take a second, just look up the specs on this engine. You know, sometimes all the way up to eight thousandths is fine. So I want to find out for sure what the spec is on that one. All right, I found the specs on this engine. 
The intake was in fact four thousandths, plus or minus a thousandth, so that is perfect. The exhaust should be six thousandths, plus or minus a thousandth. So we already checked a seven, and that fits, so that's plus one. Let's check the eight, see if that fits. If it fits, then we are going to have to adjust the exhaust valve. And yeah, the eight fits in there fine. So we need to close that gap up just a bit. So you just want to tighten up this bottom until we get some drag, which we have right now. So that is the six thousandths feeler gauge. Then I'm gonna snug these two up just a bit to put some preload, and then we'll double check things because usually that will alter the setting by a couple thousandths. So if you just snug it up, get some preload, then you should be able to make further adjustments without too much issue. And yeah, you can see we are tight now too tight. All right, right there feels pretty good. Let's put a little bit more torque between these two fasteners. And see, now we're tight. All right, that's good. Okay, the six feels pretty good. So let's just double check the seven and the eight. The seven may or may not fit, and the eight hopefully does not fit. And no, seven does not fit, so we are perfect. Let's just clean off this old gasket, or actually, I think we're gonna get lucky, and get the new one. These bolts do look a little bit longer, so they might bottom out, and they're also a 10 millimeter, sorry, an eight millimeter head, whereas the old ones were a 10.
Yeah, I just noticed we've been leaking oil the last few days while this machine's been up here. There's actually quite a bit. And from what I can tell, it was actually coming from the oil fill where I pulled that O-ring out. So I added it back. You can see though, it's stretched out a bit. It's extending further than it should. So ideally that would be replaced. And I did double check this side. There is also an O-ring, but that one's in much better condition. So I don't think I have anything better for now. So I'm gonna leave that stretched out O-ring in there. And if I can find something more appropriate, you know, I'll swap that out. But for now, I'm gonna clean up this mess, clean up that mess, and I think we're ready to put this thing back together. All right, so let's get the frame back together, get the engine back on and get all these pieces back where they belong. So there are supposed to be clips here to hold the axle in place. The generator did not come with any. Actually, there was nothing on one of the wheels. And on the other, there was a piece of copper wire, which, you know, is a good temporary solution. So I'm going to do that for now. And yeah, maybe tomorrow we'll make a trip to the store to get something a little bit better. We'll get this foot on next. We have some new rubber feet, which hopefully are the right size. I've got the engine mounts and the stator mounts loosely back in and the plan is just to bring the engine and the stator in through the side 
and hopefully set it down on here without damaging the new paint job. I picked up a few new screws to replace these rusty stripped out ones that we removed earlier. So I've got four of these and actually I got a fifth one that's a little bit longer. So if we have issues there with not enough threads, we'll try the longer one and see if that holds it in place. Try the short one first. And actually, it seems pretty good, but let's just try the longer one. See if that hole is deep enough to accommodate it, because it would hang on to the control panel quite a bit better. Perfect.
It took a bit of doing, but it did clean up really well. You know, I was hoping I could source a sticker from Generac and just pull that old one off. You know, unfortunately, they don't even list it as a part in the parts diagram, so we had to keep that. You know, but as far as the rest of the machine goes, you know, it cleaned up really, really well. So I think we're at the point where we need to roll this outside, get it started up, and see if it can still pull its rated load. All right, I think we're pretty much ready to go. And I've got the external tank plumbed in and turned on and the load bank plugged in as well. So the plan is just to get the engine started, let it warm up a bit, you know, we'll double check all the outputs and then we're gonna bring the load up in a couple increments to 3000 watts. If it handles that well, then I'm gonna try an overload of 3500 watts and see what happens. So far, so good. It was a little bit hard to start, uh, but now that it's running, it seems to be running quite well. So now I'm gonna bring the engine speed up a bit. It should be closer to 61 and a half hertz without a load. Let's take a look. With no load, we're at about 6% THD. And the sine wave doesn't look terrible. You know, that might clean up a bit under load. So let's put 1500 watts on and see how it does. So there's 1,000, 1500, and yeah, the THD, it jumped up quite a bit to 21.4%. And the sine wave, not quite as jagged, but certainly distorted. So I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes, and then we'll bring it up to 3,000 watts. Let's try 3,000 watts. So I'm going to take off the 5 and the 1,000. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2, which is actually a pretty big load suddenly. So let's see how it reacts. No problem. So we're at 2,000 watts. Now 3,000. So the machine's quite a bit louder, but it is holding. We're at 22. 0.9% THD sine wave looks about the same. Alright, it's been a couple minutes at 3000 watts, no issue. I mean, technically, it's closer to 3100 watts with that light on. So let's bump it up to 3,500 watts. Now, I'm not expecting this engine to be able to do it. These engines usually top out at about 3,200 watts. You'd be hard pressed to get anything more from it. So I'm gonna flip this switch. That'll bring us up to 3,500 watts. 
and we need to keep an eye on the engine speed. If it looks like it's going to stall, then I need to take the load off pretty quick. So here we go, 3,500 watts. And yeah, the engine definitely cannot do that. So I'm just going to take the load off, we'll let it cool down, and then shut it down. Well guys, that's pretty much a wrap. You know, I went into this assuming this was gonna be a teardown video, and as we saw, that engine was still good, and so was the generator. So I cleaned it up, and I'm glad I did, because this can still pull 3,000 watts without issue. You know, the engine held at 58 hertz, the voltage was steady at about 120 volts, and of course the THD, not great, but that, is by design you know there is nothing wrong there so you know in the end we ended up with a decent machine so I hope this video helps someone thanks for watching